Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about a platform that I have absolutely no experience with up until yesterday when I finally got my hands on an X58 system and got to play with this thing. So let's take a look. Okay, so here is the actual platform. What we have here is, uh, for the motherboard, we have an ASUS P6T X58 motherboard. And the nice thing about X58, at least from sort of the end user perspective, is this triple channel memory instead of just dual channel memory. So I actually have three sticks, eight gigabytes a piece for 24 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. And I actually have this stuff overclocked. This is that Time Tech RAM I took a look at. This is overclocked on this platform right now to over 2000 megahertz. And then I have under the heat sink here, and this is an Arctic Esports 1, though that's a fractal design fan. Under that heat sink, though, we have an Intel Xeon X5660, and you can find these processors on eBay for about $20. So the processor itself is extremely inexpensive. That's six cores and 12 threads. The problem with this platform is actually the motherboards. The motherboard cost me about $122 or $123, something like that. And that's about as cheap as you're going to find these working motherboards. So the issue with this platform is definitely not the processors. You can find the processors extremely cheap. The problem is actually getting the motherboard that goes with these processors. So if you're looking at this platform as a potential solution, maybe a budget solution to get yourself on a higher core or thread count, keep that in mind. If you find these motherboards for anywhere closer to about $100, then you're looking at a really good value. Now looking at CPU-Z here, we have the X5660 and it's running at just under 1.4 volts. Now if I was running this system 24-7, I would definitely drop that voltage down a little bit, which would sacrifice a little bit of my 4.3 gigahertz core clock there. Um, I have found that this is the absolute lowest voltage that I can get to keep that stable over a long period of time through an IDA64 stress test on the CPU. So if I'm gonna drop the voltage down, I am gonna sacrifice a little bit on the core clock, but considering this is a $20 CPU with $120 motherboard. So we're talking about a $150 platform here, and we're running this thing at 4.3 gigahertz. So I'm gonna fire up Cinebench to take a look at a Cinebench run with this platform. So there it is, and actually with this current configuration, this is the first time that I've hit 1000 in the multi-core test on Cinebench. So now just for your guys' reference, and I'll speed this way up because it'll be slower than I'll get out if I don't, but I'll also go ahead and run the single core just so you can see what that looks like. All right, now that we've finished up, we can see that we have a single core performance of about 128 here, give or take a little bit, depending on your run. But that will not quite compete with the first generation of Ryzen processors. For reference, my single core performance on my Ryzen 1800X overclocked to 4.0 gigahertz is right around 160, I believe. So you're not gonna be competing with something like the Ryzen 1600 or the 2600, but you are definitely, with this uh, combination, you'd be blowing out of the water some of the older AMD chips especially that were supposed to be competing on a gaming front with some of Intel's offerings through the second generation as well as the third generation of Intel processors. This chip with combination with the X58 motherboard will absolutely destroy things like the 8350 from AMD or some of those other 9000 series processors. Uh, like I believe the 9570 may have been one that was just overclocked really high. This processor with an X58 motherboard is still going to beat out those chips handily in something that is CPU intensive, especially if it's multi-threaded. Okay, so here we are in Kingdom Come Deliverance, and we are again on the very high preset, sort of stepping out into the world for the first time. And you'll notice we're right around that 60 FPS mark. We could easily drop the graphic settings down just a tiny bit and uh, hit that 60 FPS mark, no problem at all. And of course, this is out looking over a lot of terrain. Um, not a ton of people though, so uh, whether this is indicative of what you would see throughout the game, I don't know though. It is looking pretty good 
right now from my perspective on this particular game. Okay, so here we are in the open world of Kingdom Come Deliverance, again at the very high preset graphically. And you'll notice we're right up there near 60 FPS, but you'll also notice here the GPU is absolutely pinned right now at 100%, while the CPU is hovering in that 30 to 40% range. So we're going to go in here and uh, knock down these settings just a little bit. So now by knocking down the preset from the very high preset just down to the normal high preset, again, we're still seeing that the uh, GPU is definitely what's holding us back here. Um, at least right now. So what I'm going to do next is just drop the uh, graphics settings clear down to uh, low. And we're going to see here what kind of FPS we can cap out at in this particular game with this setup. Now obviously this isn't very good for a comparison sake other than to show that with an RX 580 or other mid-range card it's not likely that this processor combination is really going to hold you back a whole lot. Now keep in mind, this is at 1080p, and we are delivering over 100 FPS in a title that came out just last year. And admittedly, this title is not, uh, at least judging from its uh, recommended system requirements, it's not the overly uh, CPU-intensive game like some games would be but you are going to get a very good experience with this CPU. The uh, Xeon just overclocked and again we're over 100 FPS and we're still in a situation where the CPU is definitely not the, the thing that's holding us back here. So would definitely be the GPU. But that's really it guys. The whole point here was to show that on an older platform, in fact in this case quite an old platform, I believe this uh, processor came out in like 2010, 2011 range. So we're talking about seven or eight years here. You can still game at a very high level with older hardware. This entire setup to get the CPU and the motherboard costs less than $150. You'd have a very hard time matching the value of this system uh, with a modern system. And something else to note here um, is that you can use ECC RAM with the Xeon processors. And the great thing about that with the DDR3 ECC RAM, it's everywhere and it's extremely cheap by comparison of the regular DDR3 RAM. And sure, it may run at a little bit slower of a speed, but the real world effect of that is not gonna be that great. So, you know, throw in about uh, 16 or even 24 gigabytes of that ECC RAM and the entire platform cost maybe around $200 for the motherboard, CPU, and the RAM. And you're getting a platform that is gonna be good for a while longer too. Because right now this RX 580 is just not capping out this processor. And with games getting better support for multi-core setups and those higher core and thread counts, now the Intel and AMD have higher core and thread count processors sort of hitting the mainstream. It's actually very plausible, if not likely, this CPU is actually gonna see its life extended by better support of those higher core and thread counts. So guys, this was just a quick look at my X58 setup here. I'm probably gonna be running more tests um, of a setup like this, if not this identical setup. So stay tuned for that. If you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things down below do help out the channel. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Here's Your Hardware. And as always, I am Shane with Hoosier Hardware. I will see you guys in the next video.